Thank you. Okay, we're live. So welcome everybody. Uh, I'd like to, uh, before I get into introducing our, our guests and our speakers, um, I first would like to welcome you, the attendees, to uh, one of the MSTA Canada speaker series, a, a virtual speaker series that we have started with a focus on Latin America. And I'd like to thank uh, some of our supporters, uh, our gold, what we call gold sponsors, uh, Export Development Canada, uh, our friends over in Business France, and uh, Cypher Environmental, one of our very engaged members. So, and without further ado, I, I want to also introduce uh, a good friend uh, and, and a, a strong uh, collaborating partner with us, the Trade Commissioner Juan David uh, at the Embassy of Colombia. Uh, Juan David, uh, I, I give you the floor to uh, say a few words. Thank you, Ryan. It's a pleasure as always being here uh, today with you. As, as Ryan was saying, the Trade Commissioner Service works very closely with MSTA Canada in bringing the best of Canadian mining innovation to the world. Um, in this particular initiative, we are also partnering with uh, Austrit, our colleagues from the Australian government here in Colombia. Um, we are joining efforts to, uh, to bring the best of, of mining around the world to Colombia, and we are very happy to share that, uh, that experience with Australia too. Uh, but in this particular case, uh, we are very, very happy to have Anglo Gold Ashanti joining us because Anglo Gold has one of the most ambitious and most important mining projects in the whole region. Um, they are in a, in a key part of the process this year. Um, this is gonna be a game changer project for the whole industry in Colombia. So we are very happy that they are joining us today once more because they were together with us in PDAC um, in March this year. Um, and again, for us, it's really important that our companies around the world get to know what is happening with this particular project because it's gonna be one of the game changers of the local mining industry in Colombia and of the regional uh, mining industry in Latin America. So I'm, I'm not gonna talk uh, much more, but uh, I want to welcome as well Juan Esteban Ojes and Juan Camilo Quintero who are representing Anglo Gold Ashanti today. So thanks for that, Ryan. Yeah, you're welcome. And thank you for mentioning uh, our other partners that are, uh, in this initiative. So yes, before uh, I'd like to introduce our, our key guest speaker from Angle Goshanti, uh, Juan Hoyos, uh, a little introduction about who Juan is. Uh, he's a lawyer with a Master in Management and Social Entrepreneurship. Uh, he was a former executive before Anglo Gold. Uh, with Sistema B, uh, which is an international NGO dedicated to promote the certified B corporations. And he's also facilitated the creation of the Benefit Corporation's legal form in Colombia. Now, this legal structure recently was adopted by Manera de Cobre uh, Quebradona as a, a pioneer in, in the mining sector in the country. And it, you know, it really highlights this triple impact purpose-driven kind of corporation. So, it's a real pleasure to uh, have Juan back. Good to see you again. And uh, I will uh, hand over the mic and the, the floor is yours, Juan. Okay, thanks a lot, Ryan. Thank you, Juan, for, for having me. Um, again, my name is, hi everyone, in the other side of the screen. Uh, my name is Juan Ojos. I am part of Anglo Golashanti, Colombia's Corporate Affairs and Innovation Team. Uh, fully dedicated to the Quebradona project, a uh, world-class subterranean copper, gold, and, and silver uh, mining project, which is currently under the environmental and social licensing process with the Colombian Authority. Uh, also, I would like to, to, to thank MSTA Canada for, for this invitation and, and everyone involved, all the entities involved with, with this uh, really special uh, space for us to to present and to share about about what the Carolina project yeah, is like. Um, secondly, I, I, I'll have to to apologize in advance for my strong Latino accent and for perhaps my limited uh, English vocabulary and for probably I will be struggling with with construction some with construction some some ideas in English but I will do my best speaking slowly and please don't hesitate to, 
interrupt me anytime if my ideas are not clear enough. Um, also, I would like to just to share with, with the audience that my presentation will be divided into four, four brief parts. The third one, the first one is, is a quick presentation about Anglo Golashanti in the world. Uh, the second one will be a geographical and perhaps cultural contextualization of the Colombian territory in which the Carolina project is being developed. It's the southwest of a region called Antioquia, where I come from. So I will be talking about it from the, from the inside. Uh, the third part will be uh, an explanation on, on how the the Quebradona managing team um, has designed a uh, Quebradona project using uh, Professor Simon Sinek Golden Circle methodology, which is uh, which starts with with why, with answering the most difficult questions these days about uh, how to how to design a business model and, and any given project. And in the fourth part of the of the presentation, I will uh, leave you with with a short, 13, 14 minute long, uh, the script te technical descriptive video, for the audience to to get to know from the technical point of view the the Cabrona project. So, uh, having said so, I will ask my colleague Juliana to start the presentation. So I was, as I was saying in the first part, I would like to introduce you to Anglo Gola Shanti in the world. Um, we are the third largest gold mining company in the world, uh, conducting exploration activities in Colombia since 2004 with uh, three different projects, La Colosa, Gramalote, and Quebradona, the one I will be focusing uh, today on. Uh, Anglo Golashanti has 13 operations in 10 countries, as you can see in the, in the global map there. We generate more than 44,000 jobs. And uh, last year in 2019, we produced 3.3 million ounces of, of gold. Anglo Golashanti is a public uh, corporation. Um, Whose, whose stock uh, is, is, is in, the, in the New York, Johannesburg, and, and Sydney in Australia markets um, with private and public funds being our, our investors, our shareholders. You can see uh, prestigious uh, private funds in the, in the slide. Um, also, we have the, the Norway's government fund, pension fund as one of our shareholders which is, um, is also a huge commitment for us to, to keep these important shareholders. Um, it, it's always, um, you know, an extra commitment to have this, this kind of, of shareholders in, in our company. Um, Anglo Golashanti is a value oriented and a value driven kind of corporation. I will, in the next slide, I will describe our six, our six uh, main values. Uh, our first value is safety. It's, it's Ryan and Juan and the audience, it's, it's almost an obsession for Anglo Golashanti, the safety of, of our operations. Um, so it, it's, it's, it's something that you as collaborator really, really feel in a, in a day by day, um, situations. Anglo Golashanti has been awarded for, for safety with different international uh, awards during the last years. So that's definitely our first value. Our second value is the value of diversity. Coming from such a diverse uh, country like Colombia, um, and in, 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 the, in the Colombia, in the Anglo Golashanti Colombia team, you can feel the, the, the richness that's, that diversity provides to our team of collaborators. We have um, in our team different kind of, of, orig of, of regional origins in the company. We have uh, 
all the genders, all the sexual preferences, different ages in our team, which only adds up to the to the richness of, of our team and, and it's, it's providing really good results on how we work together on, on developing such an important project for, for the company and, and for the country. Our third uh, value is uh, has to do with, with the fact that we want the communities in society and, and societies in which we operate to be better off with our presence than without our presence. So we make huge efforts to, to be sure that this is being applied. If we have a doubt about this situation, we prefer not to conduct the project. So, so that's our third value. We really make huge efforts to, to establish that the societies and the communities are going to be better off with our presence there. Our fourth value is the fact that we are accountable for our actions and uh, undertake to deliver on, on our commitment, on our commitments. We are a company and, and a team of, 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 of collaborators and a, and a group of persons that are worth, we are worth trusting. We, when we, when we give our word, we, we fulfill our word. It's, it's part of the Colombian culture as well. And it's part of the, of the success we are having in, on the engagement plans we have with the communities and the different activities we have been doing with the, with the communities in, in Colombia. Our fifth value is uh, the fact that we treat each other with dignity and, and respect. Obviously, it's, it's a company that is, is, is very, is very, it feels really good to work for. It's really, despite the fact that, you know, there's pressure and there's, you know, critical situations, uh, it's, it's, it's a group of friends, really, what we have here in, in Anglo Shanti in Colombia. And the sixth value is the, the respect for environment. These days in, in the current situation and current environmental challenges of, of the world, is, is, it's a value that needs no further explanation, I think. We will be talking about uh, environment uh, uh, later in the, in the presentation. So for the next uh, slide, um, <clears throat> I would like to, to for, for the second part of, the, of my presentation, uh, I would like to make a geographical and cultural contextualization of the region in which the Anglobola Shantis Quebradona project is being developed. Uh, is the region of Antioquia, as I mentioned before. Here are some, some, some data about, about this uh, really important region for Colombia. It's considered the uh, industrial and commercial region for Colombia. Uh, the capital city is, is Medellin, where, where I'm actually broadcasting from right now. Um, but the project is located in a really beautiful and peculiar little town called Jericó in the southwest of the region of Antioquia. Jericó is the cradle of the Paisa culture, one of the most important inner culture, inner Colombian inner cultures, the Paisa culture. Jericó is a, is a quaint colonial town, uh, well known for the, its coffee production, well known for being a touristic important destination, well known for the production of citrix, and um, well known as well for, for being the birthplace for Santa Madre Laura which is the, the first Colombian saint. As you're probably aware of, Colombia has a huge uh, Catholic community. So you can imagine how important Jericó is for the, for the Colombian uh, population when, when, when you gave birth to the only uh, Colombian saint. It's also known for, for building beautiful, beautiful handcrafted pieces of, of leather called Carriel. So it's really a peculiar little town which is in, in the heart of, of, of the people from, from the region. It's also well known for beautiful landscaping, as, as we will see in the video. And that is an asset that we have the responsibility to take care of when you, when you bring a, a big project like, like Quebradona. 
So for the next slide, please. Before I start uh, describing the, the, how the Anglobol Ashanti Quebradona team is, is developing, is developing uh, the Quebradona project using uh, the Golden Circle methodology of Professor Simon Sinek, I would like to mention that, that as you know, given the, the, the current social and environmental challenges uh, the world is facing, there's a reaction coming from the business world. There's a reaction uh, from the markets that is called many names, but probably the most general name is, is the, the conscious capitalism movement. There's actually a really interesting book written by Professor Raj Sisodia and John Mackey with the same name, Conscious Capitalism, which I uh, suggest you guys read if you haven't. And this, this global movement, movement uh, invites and actually demands from the market and from, from businesses all over the place, from all the sectors to redefine success and to redefine the purpose of business these days. Aiming not just for financial benefits, but, but expanding uh, its purpose to the generation of social and environmental positive impact with the development of, of any given business model. So with, with this in mind, we have uh, deployed the Simon Sinek uh, methodology, which uh, asks the, the managers of, 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 of a project to start solving the most difficult question, which is probably the why question. I question deeply related for the, about the, the purpose of the project, not just how to do the project and what the project is about, but why? What is the reason of, 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 of the project? Uh, so after conducting a lot of, of work inside the team and, and conducting that deep dialogue with the community of Perico, we put together our purpose which is that in Quebradona, we believe that our project has the capability of transforming the mineral richness of a region like the Southwest of Antioquia into its social, environmental and economic progress. That's how we have phrased our, our, our purpose. And that's what motivates us every day, you know, to, to, to work for, for the future of the present and the future of this beautiful region. Um, then you move on to the how question, again, using this golden circle methodology. So how do we materialize this purpose? And the, the answer is very simple, through innovation. Innovation is at the core of the Quebradona project. In the innovation world, you, you say that you have soft and uh, hard innovation. As for the hard aspect or side of the innovation, we talk about technology. The Quebradona project uh, will use state-of-the-art technology in terms of machinery and, and the processes uh, directly involved with the, with the mining process. We will be using all, all kinds of Ford industrial revolution aspects like automatization, digitalization of the information, uh, 5G technology, um, circular economy, and so on. That's for the hard aspect of, of innovation, top technology. Uh, we believe uh, that the Quebradona project will probably be the, the, the most uh, advanced uh, mining project in, in Latin America in terms of, of the application of technology, of state-of-the-art technology, and one of the most uh, advanced in the world. As for the, for the soft, sort of say, part of the, of the innovation has to do, again, with the purpose of the, of the project and has to do with what you mentioned in my, in my profile, the fact that Quebradona adopted um, a really innovative 
kind of corporation of for-profit corporation, which the Colombian legal system recently uh, created, which is the, in English would be the benefit corporations. Uh, in Spanish is the Sociedad de Beneficio e Interés Colectivo, collective interest kind of, of corporation, which uh, is, a, is a legal instrument that allows us to, to materialize the, the, our, our purpose and to incorporate such a triple impact purpose into our legal form, our legal kind of corporation. Um, as you mentioned before, Quebradona is a pioneer doing this in Colombia and many, so, some other mining companies are, are starting to, 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 to follow our path. So we're very proud about it and we want to create this, this, you know, this team of, of, of purpose-driven mining companies here in, in Colombia because we have a huge challenge you know, developing the, the, the modern mining sector in Colombia. Uh, finally, you get, when, when you are using this golden circle methodology, you, you, you go to the, to the what question. So what is the, what is the project about? And uh, <clears throat> we have answered this question, but saying that we are not just developing a subterranean world-class copper, gold, and silver mine, but that we are uh, facilitating the innovative encounter between a world-class copper, gold, and silver mine, subterranean mine, with a biodynamic park, a biodynamic park that will be regenerating tropical dry forest in the region of the Southwest of Antioquia, which is one of the main um, environmental challenges of the region. Um, for you to have an idea, the dry tropical forest in the, in the region of the Southwest of Colombia. We only have uh, around 5% of what we used to have 50 or 60 years ago. So it, it, it really worries us. So regenerate, regenerating uh, dry tropical forest is what we do by facilitating this encounter with, with our mine. We will be regenerating in the live mine in around 25, 30 year time we will be regenerating 2,500 hectares of dry tropical forest, which, which is quite a, a challenge, but such an innovation as well for the, for the mining sector. Uh, that's, that's basically what, what we are going to do. So as for the biodynamic park, uh, I think in the previous slide, you can see that some, some kind of infrastructure we will have, we will have a, uh, bird watching uh, platforms. We will have spaces for the community to, to conduct academic activities, uh, to have recreational activities. It will be powered by electric uh, power uh, using the, the guadua as, as, as the material for, for building these platforms. But I think in the video, you will have a, a better idea of, of the biodynamic park. So I think, um, Kuli, that we can launch the video if you don't have any, any questions at this point. Miner de Cobra Cabradona, Mining with Purpose. Cabradona is an underground mining project for copper and other minerals. The Quebradona project has been designed considering the following concepts. One, implementation of cutting edge technology, efficient consumption of energy and natural resources, and maximizing the use of electrical equipment. Two, reduce environmental impacts and implementing circular economy strategies. Three, support local communities to meet the sustainable development goals of the region defined by the United Nations. Four, improvement of natural and social capital and implementation of shared value strategies with the communities, municipality, and the region. Five, create a positive legacy developing an early landscape architecture through the construction of a new biodynamic park for the stages of construction, operation, closure, and post-closure. 
The project is in Colombia, in the Department of Antioquia, in the municipality of Jerico, 104 kilometers southwest of Medellin. The project is located in two zones of the municipality. The first part is the deposit located in the Cabradona hamlet in the land property of El de Quito, owned by the project where there is currently a pine plantation. It is located 12 kilometers from the urban center of Jerico, 707 meters from the integrated management district Cuchilla Jarin Tamasis, and 320 meters from the municipal border of Tamasis. The second part is where the infrastructure will be built which is located in Cauca Hamlet, 2,400 meters away from the Cauca River, three kilometers from Point de Iglesias, and 37 kilometers from Jerico. Jerico has about 12,103 inhabitants in an area of 19,300 hectares, of which there will be a direct intervention on 610,068 hectares with the project equivalent to 3.16% of the total area of the municipality. The project's influence area includes the urban center of Jerico and Quepardona, Vatecitos, La Soledad, La Cabaña, La Viña, Buga, Balenque, La Pista, La Hermosa, Palacabillo, and Cauca Hamlets, and the populated center of Puente Iglesias. Minera de Cobra Cabradona has been in the territory for 14 years developing surface and subsoil prospecting and exploration studies as well as social, environmental, technical and economic feasibility analysis for the development of modern mining with the highest sustainability standards, allowing it to generate and share value with the region. Upon obtaining the environmental license, the construction and assembly stage begins. It will have an approximate duration of four years, a 21-year exploitation, a three-year closure, and a 10-year post-closure period for a total of 38 years. The construction and assembly stage will begin with the development of infrastructure works such as access and roads, topsoil, preparation of areas, and a tunnel portal. During the whole construction time, all the necessary measures will be taken to minimize the intervention on the landscape and its surroundings. Two tunnels will be built in the portal, namely the southern and northern tunnels with a distance of 50 meters between them, each 6 kilometers long in parallel. Both will have an initial 10 times 10 meter section, and they will be built using construction machinery. At 300 meters, the two tunnels will change sections to 6 times 6 meters, and they will be built using the drilling and blasting method. At 1.5 kilometers above the northern tunnel, a fork will be built and a tunnel will begin its construction diagonally upwards in a 6 by 6 meter section. It will be built using the drilling and blasting method until it reaches the ore body, implementing the most modern and efficient controls to ensure that vibrations are not perceived on the surface. Four ventilation shafts will be built close to the ore body and where the exploitation sublevels will be developed in order to ensure a constant flow of air into the deposit. For the development of the project, landscape impact management is a priority from Manera Cabradona. This is why, during the operation of the project, controls will be continued to minimize the impact on the landscape in such a way that it is not affected by the presence of the project. The amount of water to be captured from the Cauca River will be less than 0.25 cubic meters per second, which means less than 1% of the flow of the river. This water will be used for construction, operation, closure, and post-closure activities. The camp, workshop, offices, plant, and powder magazine will be built, and a landscape management will be implemented to allow the integration of the infrastructure to the environment. In order to manage the water, sediments, ponds, and plants will be built to treat the domestic and non-domestic effluents generated by the project, thus ensuring that all water like acid rocks drain or tailings drainage are treated correctly with active or passive treatments, guaranteeing compliance with environmental legislation and their quality when they are returned to the Cauca River. Gebradona will not use substances such as mercury and cyanide during all of its phases. The operation will be carried out using the sublevel caving exploitation method. This method is based on the use of drilling and blasting to fracture the mineralized body under controlled conditions. 
starting at the top of the deposit and moving sequentially down through 21 uniform and horizontal sublevels. The ore resulting from the blasting is removed from each sublevel with the use of loaders and it is taken to a shaft called ore pass where the ore will be dumped. The shaft connects all sublevels to a transfer level from where the material will be transported to the underground crushing station located one kilometer deep from the surface in such a way that noise and air impacts are controlled. The ore benefit process begins with the crushing inside the mine and then the ore is transferred through a belt conveyor to an ore stockpile to begin the process at the plant. Then it is taken to a secondary crushing and, finally, to a grind where sizes of particles smaller than that of sand will be obtained. Through a flotation of concentration process, copper, gold and silver will be recovered. After being filtered, a concentrate of copper, gold and silver with the moisture required by the market. This concentrate is transported in containers to the port of Bueno and Tudat by trailer trucks. The material not recovered by the flotation process is called tailings and goes through a selective separation process where the inert material is separated from the pyrite. Both the inert tailings and the pyrite are filtered to a moisture which guarantee the stability of the infrastructure and are transported through the project's internal roads by 30 to 40 ton trucks from the stockpile to the tailings and pyrite deposit without affecting Hedico and its access roads. The pyrite deposit will have an insulation with geomembrane and covers with a minimum height of 10 meters of filtered tailings in order to isolate oxygen and water to avoid the generation of acid drainage. Throughout a process plant, more than 80% of the water will be recirculated. Organic reagents will be used. Energy will be consumed efficiently. And all measures will be taken to control noise, dust, and lighting. And most importantly, there will be a demanding environmental handling of the tailings and the landscaping and architectural design of the project. During the operating time, the filtered tailings deposit plan and pyrite deposit plan are directly related to the progress of the mine sublevels. As of the third year of operation, the subsidence phenomenon will begin inside the surface of the El Chiquito and property, which is owned by the project. This will be progressive and controlled throughout the 21 years of the exploitation stage and will generate the following within the subsidence. The continuous subsidence zone, the fracture zone and the caving zone. With the closure plan, we will implement all the necessary activities to facilitate the prevention, control, mitigation and compensation of the impacts generated by the mining complex in order to leave a positive legacy behind the economic and productive contributions of the project. Mine closure and post-closure include the following. For the deposit area, plugging of the ventilation shafts and construction of perimeter dikes around the subsidence zone in order to prevent the entry of people and terrestrial fauna of larger species and the planting of trees with the aim of implementing native natural covers that are integrated into the ecosystems near the project. In the valley area, the decommission of infrastructure and revegetalization of excavation material disposal zones, ZADMAs, the filtered tailings deposit, the camp platforms, the plant, workshops, offices, and the powder magazine, thus ensuring the homogeneity of the landscape and a passive treatment system for the water coming from the tunnels and the tailings deposit. Hedico has an important natural richness due to its thermal floors and different ecosystems, such as the tropical dry forest and mountain forests, which have been modified by different activities over time. Minera de Cobra Cabradona will support the regional connectivity strategy for the recovery of these ecosystems with the implementation of the 1% investment plan and the compensation plan which will preserve, rehabilitate, recover and generate sustainable uses of 2,548.60 hectares previously defined, this being one of the largest investments to improve the natural capital in the history of Jericó. Our legacy will be 1. Improve the connectivity of the region's ecosystems. Developing our project with high international standards, with cutting-edge technology and the best global practices, respecting and protecting not only biodiversity and sources of water, 
but seeking to improve the natural capital of the region. And two, promote the generation and transfer of knowledge through the creation of a purposeful rehabilitated territory with the premise of articulation to the culture and landscape of the region. To do this, consideration must be given to the fact that over the years, there has been a transformation of the natural landscape with the development of economic activities. The legacy is that, with the development of the project, a new landscape will be created, including the construction of a biodynamic park, i.e., a park that will be developed as the phase of mineral extraction progresses and built in tandem with the closure plan. The park will be located where the project infrastructure is developed and will consist of 1. Educational infrastructure and research whose objective is to transform the project into the laboratory to promote research for the conservation and preservation of regional species, allow the generation of knowledge with the interaction of the project, the community, and the academy. 2. Overlook infrastructure, bamboo modules, and vegetable shelter for bird watching to generate the interaction of man with nature. 3. Power infrastructure, focused on the power generation of the infrastructure of the park, with the use of solar gardens, wind turbines, and fog catching system. Four, tropical dry forest landscape units, restoration of natural covers, production of timber forest, guajua and fruit, and implementation of wildlife crossings. Cape Radona is and will be a great generator of jobs and opportunities for Carico and the region. The construction stage will require 3,000 people, both directly and indirectly. The operation stage will require 1,500 people, and the closure and post-closure stage will require 450 people. The largest amount of local and regional labor will be hired, and we will coexist and potentiate other livelihood activities in Carico. Minera de Cobra Cabradona is mining with a social, economic, and environmental purpose committed to Carico, Antioquia, and Colombia. Okay, so I think that was a pretty complete video that describes the, the project from a technical point of view. And I was I, I just would like to, to quickly end my presentation sharing with summary and, and milestones of the of the project, the plan size and its type, as you can see, the total or treated, the plan fit average rate the capital expenditure, the copper and gold that it will produce, the state of the permit in which, as I mentioned, is, is um, currently under, under the, the social and environmental licensing process with the Colombian Authority. Uh, we already completed our feasibility report inside the company. And uh, the first copper will be produced in 2025. The next and final slide. The next one, please, Uli, which describes, you know, tax and, and contribute economic contribution to the region and to, to Colombia in terms of, of royalties in the life of mine. We estimate that it will be $413 million uh, as direct royalties for the municipality of Erico. Uh, it would be $83 million in the life of mine again. It's, it's, it's a huge amount of money for, for what we call a six category municipality. Six category meaning is, is a really poor municipality. Uh, the income tax will be $1,595 million, $1.5 billion. Um, local taxes, the local supplies, which is really important in order to develop uh, a, an ecosystem in the, in the community, will be close to $70 million during the life, mine, the life of mine. Our social investment plan will be close to $50 million during the life of mine. And on land taxes, we will be, play, we'll be paying close to $5 million during, during the life of mine. 
So this is it for me. Thanks, thanks a lot for, for, for this space, for this opportunity to share uh, how we are devoted to, to build this, this beautiful uh, project, purpose-driven project, and how we are enjoying you know, materializing this, materializing this, this purpose in the in the beautiful region of of Antioquia and the municipality of of Jericó. Thank you again, Ryan. Thank you, Juan, for a, a very uh, I would say comprehensive and uh, inspirational, if you will, uh, presentation. Uh, it's uh, I think it's a sign of the times, as you say. Uh, I think you guys are kind of at the front, uh, ahead of the curve, if you will, of how. Uh, mining companies present projects and 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 how they're going to uh, uh, develop them and why you know a uh, very very interesting approach so uh, thank you for that um, there there is a uh, a question here right off the right out of the gate if anybody has any questions please use the q and a uh, function at the bottom of your screen um, the, this question, I think it, it, it speaks probably to what you had talked about as wanting it to be the one of the most advanced, uh, uh, I think you called it advanced, yeah, projects in the world. Um, the, the question is, you know, do you plan on automating any of the equipment such as the LHDs with teleoperations and remote control? Yeah, so uh, I'm not part of the, of the technical, uh, Team, so I would I, I'll have to be very careful with with my answer. My my colleague and actually boss Juan Camilo Quintero uh, is here with us, and I would I would love uh, Juan Camilo to to answer that that question because he is I I I, I uh, he is really into technology. So Juan, please help me out with that one. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Juan. Good morning, everyone. Ryan, thank you again for the, for the invitation. Yes, for sure. We, we are designing a, a, a copper mining with a, a, a edge of the technology. We will have a autonomous vehicles in the, uh, with, we believe in, in level three. Uh, we, we are thinking how to incorporate for revolution technologies as virtual reality. For, for training, uh, internet uh, of things, industrial internet of things, uh, a lot of sensors uh, during the, the whole process, in the tailing, uh, for vibrations, uh, for emissions and, and so on, uh, measuring the, the, the water in, in different parts of the, of the project. And, and we are thinking in, in how to incorporate sensor in the in the workers as well in the helmets to, to measure the 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 hurt the pulsations the uh, maybe the, the how they sweat in the into the mine to for the hydration and how to hydrate the, the, the workers um, 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 and we are running right now uh, technologies or violence and in, uh, competitive intelligence just just looking for the Different patents around the world. Who has the the, the frontier technologies and, and how to incorporate in our in our uh, uh, innovation phases? Because as you know, and, and one was explained, we 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 have two different parts in the innovation strategy. In terms of for revolution technology, we are going to adapt different technology, but we 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 don't want to to run a company. Uh, as a pilot in, in for revolution technology or research. But in the other hand, in circular economy, we will have research and development. Um, and we have a lot of expectation through, through the big corporation because we want to impact positively the territory when we are operating right now. And the environmental aspect will be so important for, for us. These this are the, the the two branches of the innovation thesis that we have right now. Excellent, thank you very much. So it, it kind of a, a, a feed on question, if you will, to that. Uh, would, you be, would you be looking at battery operated vehicles uh, to, to reduce? I know there's been some case studies where companies have gone to battery electric and have actually 
reduce the need of how many ventilation shafts they've had to use. Um, is it something you're looking at? Yeah, for sure. We we will use uh, electric vehicles inside the mining, the in the tunnels, and um, and close to the 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 main focus of the mine. Uh, outside of the mine, uh, at the moment we have uh, diesel diesel equipment, but 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 we are thinking in how to implement uh, electric vehicles without cable. Uh, that is so, so important, and um, and for sure it, this this strategy is going to diminish the, the the emissions, the CO two to the atmosphere, and this is one of the, the the main topic in the in the in this project. Right, because because what will be the main power source for you uh, into the? Is there hydroelectric around, or do you have yeah. to? There is. Yeah, 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 hundred percent. Okay. okay. For the bio dynamic park, will be will be with uh, some some different alternative energies, mm -hmm. like solar energy, water energy in hydroelectric, um, and the last one is is like a special is like a sunflowers that is that is is going around uh, following the, the the sun to generate the, the own energy for the, the, by the, the, by the, by the biodynamic park. Wow, okay. Yeah, it's quite visionary. So, excellent. Um, let me just see, uh, we, we seem to have a bit of a quiet, uh, a quiet group uh, with us today. Um, I know there are some meetings being set up, so that's probably, they probably are all waiting to, uh, to meet you one-on-one -on -one, uh, in, that re in that regard, so. Um, I think I think what I'll do right now is yeah I think uh, if nobody has any specific questions, um, I will thank you very much again uh, for for this uh, again an inspirational uh, uh, presentation an exciting project I can see why you guys are very proud of it and uh, look forward to how it's going to move forward and how Canada can contribute to the solutions you need to make this happen so. Again, thank you very much uh, for everybody from Angle Gold, and thank you as well, uh, Juan David. Brian, I just I just want to add, add a comment. In Colombia, we're in a in a discussion uh, between the illegal mining and the legal mining, and most of the people uh, believe that they or compare the illegal with the legal. And, and we are we are running a huge effort in how to change the the perception about the legal mining, the technological mining, the mining with purpose that regenerate the, the natural natural ecosystems, um, and all the messages, all the twitters, all the the uh, everything regarding to the perception in in this project around the world will be so useful for us. When the people outside of our country uh, comment about the, the the real mining that is running, in, for example, in Canada, that respect the nature, that collaborate with the with the the, the local communities, and the people uh, can see this message from abroad, we can we can defend this project in a better condition. We need the support from different countries because all the world needs the, the mining sector to diminish the, the global warming. We believe that the, the, the mining sector will be the, the main, the main, maybe the main the, the main project to, to diminish the poverty in most of the the the, the region in, in not only in Antioquia, in Colombia. And we need to to gather all the person that are, are the, that are in the in the industry to support between us. Thank you so much for the space, and we will be so happy to to receive comments, uh, ideas, and to connect with different providers uh, around the world to include it in this in this initiative. And Camilo, let me comment very quickly on that you you just said because I believe for us it's very important. It may be not very usual for uh, our audiences um, to hear so much about the social context uh, um, of a place where such a project is, 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 is taking place, but 
for what you just say is very important for us in the Trade Commissioner Service uh, that our aud audience understands what are the main challenges that we have here. These challenges are not only exclusive from Colombia, but we see them across Africa, across other emerging markets. And uh, it is important for our audience to understand that we as a Trade Commissioner Service uh, different to other markets that have a more mature uh, mining industry like Chile or like Australia or, or like Canada, we really need to get to understand these ch challenges very well, the challenges that Juan Esteban was mentioning, that Juan Camilo just mentioned, because these are, the, these are, the, these are going to determine uh, whether or not we, we actually can do modern mining in Colombia. Colombia is a country that is just starting to know what modern mining is, and so for us in the in the Canadian embassy, and this is a mission that we also share with the Australian embassy, it is very important to make part of those discussions so that people know that what they have seen in the past 150 years of history of mining in Colombia is not exactly what we are aiming at, because it's not modern mining, it's, it's mining that is not in, in, um, in the levels of the standards that we want. Um, but for us, it's very important, again, that the companies uh, that, that you in the audience represent, uh, that you're looking to make business in countries like Colombia, that you understand that very well, and that you work together with the operators to make that happen, to bring modern mining and to part partake in those discussions and engage with local communities um, to, to raise the, the level of understanding uh, so that people know that actually we, we can do mining and mining can be a, a, um, a motor for the industry uh, rather than, than um, something bad as it has been perceived in the, in the past year. So again, for us, it's really important um, that, that we can share that experience, that companies like Anglo Ashanti can give us their testimony and uh, that may be a different angle that, that our audience doesn't see in other more mature markets, but the Trade Commissioner Service here in Colombia needs to work uh, in those angles. One, the, the innovation, the technological angle, but at the same time, we need to raise the, the understanding and the reputation of, of what we do well. Uh, that's why it's very important for us to partake in these discussions. Thank you really, very much, Juan Camilo, for having said that because Again, it's, 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 a, it's a part that we often don't see very much in, in the world. And we are very happy to have you here and, and explain that. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. And thank you, Juan, for the invitation, the MSTA, MSTA in Canada. Thanks a lot for the opportunity. Excellent. Yeah. OK, thank you very much, everybody. Thank Take you. Uh, uh, Juan. Uh, Esteban, Juan Camilo, Juliana, uh, if you can stay online, please, just for a couple more minutes. Thank you.